Hi guys, and welcome to Watch Card Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week, and to sharing some practical tips along the way. I'm your host and all-around security nerd, Corey Nockiner, and this is the episode for the week starting November 10th, 2014. In this week's episode, I'll cover the highlights from Patch Day, a targeted attack going after executives staying at hotels, and some interesting information about the latest vulnerability affecting iOS users. Let's start by covering Patch Day. As I mentioned in the last episode, this Tuesday was Microsoft Patch Day. We'd expected 16 bulletins, but we only got 14. Microsoft didn't say why they had a delay too. However, the bulletins we did get fixed vulnerabilities in Windows, Internet Explorer, Office, specifically Word, the .NET Framework, and the SharePoint Foundation Server. Four of the bulletins were rated critical, eight were rated important, and two were moderate. But let's just cover the highlights. The biggest update was probably the OS LE, or Object Linking and Embedding Patch. And that's because I've been talking about the Sandworm or APT attack campaign. This is where uh, advanced bad guys have been sending spear phishing emails with, with Word or, or, or Office documents attached to them. And these documents took advantage of a zero-day flaw to force uh, malware onto their victims' uh, computers. And of course, this OLE update fixes some of those vulnerabilities. So since bad guys are exploiting it in the wild, I think it's the biggest update that you should get immediately. There's also a big Internet Explorer patch that fixes a lot of memory corruption issues, which of course are used very often in drive-by downloads. But another very big vulnerability was something that affects Windows S channel. And this is actually the TLS uh, implementation uh, Microsoft or Windows computers use. Some uh, media outlets have been calling this WinShock in the tradition of naming vulnerabilities lately. But anyways, this is a pretty significant vulnerability. Essentially, if a bad guy can send malicious packets to your computer, to your Windows computer, uh, that uh, on a port that uses S channel, he can exploit this flaw to gain complete control of your computer. So if you have any Microsoft uh, web servers, email servers, any servers that uh, are publicly facing on the internet, it's pretty important that you apply this patch. That said, I still think the OLE vulnerability is bigger simply because there's exploit code in the wild that's actually taking advantage of the flaw. This S-channel vulnerability is a big flaw in theory, but I'm not aware of any proof of concept or exploit code for it in the wild. In any case, go get all the critical Microsoft updates as soon as you can, and apply the other updates quickly as well. Oh, and by the way, don't forget Adobe Share's patch day. They only released one update to their Adobe Flash player. This fixed 18 big vulnerabilities in Flash. It is a critical Flash update, so if you use Flash, go get that update as well. The next story is about Dark Hotel. During the week, Kaspersky, one of WatchGuard's partners, released a lot of details about a new attack campaign they're calling Dark Hotel. And pretty much, uh, this is how the attack campaign works. Imagine this, you, you go to Asia for a business trip and you go to a particular hotel and log on to their wireless network. After you log on to the network, you get a pop-up window saying, hey, there's an update for Adobe Flash. And being a, a security conscious person, you go ahead and click on that update. And you download and install it. And of course, the update is signed properly, so it seems very legitimate, and your operating system installs it no problem. Problem. Unbeknownst to you though, this was actually an attack on that hotel's wireless network. There have been bad guys that are doing man-in-the-middle attacks on wireless networks, and they actually injected that fake uh, Adobe update into your communications, and they even cracked uh, digital certificates in order to make sure to sign their malware so that your computer would accept it. If this all sounds like science fiction, well it's not. According to Kaspersky's uh, white paper, that is the Dark Hotel attack campaign. And that's really all we know about the campaign. According to Kaspersky, the bad guys have broken into a number of unnamed hotel wireless networks. And they seem to be doing so through the actual wireless vendor that provides or helps hotels provide wireless networks. And they don't know how they got into the wireless hotel network or this vendor's network. They don't know exactly how
how they did the man in the middle attack because this seems to be a, a very sophisticated attacker that's actually manually deleting his tracks after this particular attack. But according to them, these bad guys have been doing this for over seven years. And it seems to be they're targeting uh, Asian hotels. And uh, they seem to know when certain types of victims are going to visit the hotels. People that work for defense contractors, there's a big focus on nuclear employees and, and people associated with nuclear facilities. And it really seems to have an Asian focus. When they do successfully install Trojans on victims' computers, it seems to be a very well-designed kernel-level keyline. Logger. And the kernel level aspect of the keylogger means that it's very hard for local endpoint security controls to catch it, which suggests these are quite sophisticated actors. So what should you do about this? Well, first of all, don't panic. This is a really targeted attack. It seems to only affect certain hotels at a very specific time when these sophisticated bad guys know that a particular person is going to stay there. That said, this could happen to anyone. It's a perfect example or illustration of why Wi-Fi networks that aren't under your control can be very, very dangerous, whether they're open networks or even if they're secured networks that you're joining because you're in a hotel or a restaurant or some hospitality location. When you're on someone else's network, they have the capability of doing a man-in-the-middle attack on you. They are controlling how your traffic goes online. That means if their security is not as good as your Wi-Fi network security, you know, bad guys may have gained control of their network and can steal your data. So what can you do about this? Well, first, encrypt as much of your communication as you can when you're on someone else's wireless network. Use VPN. Use HTTPS connections. The other thing is you simply have to be less trusting. Sophisticated actors are good at emulating uh, real legitimate looking update mechanisms. If you get updates or you're thinking about downloading and installing software while you're on an open network, you may want to rethink it because perhaps it's not the real software you're looking for. So again, when you're on wireless networks, just be careful what you do. Avoid downloading things or visiting very important sensitive sites on someone else's wireless network. Use encryption, whether it's VPN or HTTPS connections, as often as possible. And realize that someone else is controlling your route to the internet, which means you may be susceptible to man-in-the-middle attacks. In any case, the dark hotel uh, research that Kaspersky did is very interesting. I'll post a link to the PDF uh, about the research in the blog post associated with this video. So for the final story this week, I want to talk about iOS Mask, which is a, a big new iOS vulnerability that affects all iOS devices, whether they're jailbroken or not. Now, you probably remember last week me talking about WireLurker. Uh, this attack attack campaign that was affecting iOS devices. Basically, it infected an OS X computer, and if you plugged your iPhone or iPad into that computer, it would try to transfer malware onto your computer using enterprise provisioning to legitimize the software that's being installed. But this week, FireEye released some details about a vulnerability that WireLurker actually exploited or leveraged a bit in order to, to better hide malware on the iOS device. And in the new trend of naming vulnerabilities, FireEye calls this iOS mask. Essentially, FireEye found that one application can overwrite another application on your iOS device and pretend to be that application, assuming it's not one of Apple's first-party applications. So if a bad guy was able to use the WireLurker attack and use enterprise provisioning to install a third-party application on your, your phone, maybe it was an application called a New Simpsons Game, and you ran that New Simpsons Game application, essentially, the malicious application would copy the bundle identifier, the way iOS applications identify themselves. And because iOS doesn't do a good job of making sure that the certificate for an application matches a specific bundle identifier, that means that my new Simpsons game application can suddenly take over your banking application and become it. And that means next time you run what you think is your banking application, it will be the malicious banking application, which could then continue to pretend to be your banking application, 
meanwhile stealing all the data you enter into that application. It also means that the malicious application gains access to all the data for the legitimate application, whether there's any, for instance, uh, session information from your last login, or if the application encrypts stuff locally, the malicious application gains access to it. So this is a pretty big vulnerability, and WireLurker is showing that bad guys are already starting to exploit this in the wild, even though according to FireEye, they're not using the full potential of this particular vulnerability. Apple hasn't fixed this vulnerability yet, but FireEye felt like they needed to disclose it since WireLurker is already using aspects of it. So what can you do about this today? In the future, I'm sure Apple will patch it, but today there's a few things you can do. First of all, unless you're a security researcher, I really don't recommend you jailbreak. It can make your device much more susceptible to attack, and it does allow you to install third-party applications very easily, but that means you can get malicious third-party applications. However, this attack also will affect legitimate non-jailbroken iOS devices because of enterprise provisioning. So you need to be very careful of accepting any provisioning certificates on your iOS device, unless you know you trust them. There's actually an easy way to check this. If you go to general settings and look at profiles, you can see any provisioning certificates that your device has used, if you have any at all. Many devices won't have any. Me, for instance, I work at WatchGuard, so I have a provisioning certificate from WatchGuard to install the WatchGuard uh, VPN application I use. But what you should do is check your device, look at all the provisioning certificates you use, and if you have any weird certificates there, you, you might want to be concerned. You might want to figure out what application used that certificate, because chances are you may have visited a website and said yes to installing the application that could have been malicious. So just to summarize, don't install apps from third-party applications unless you're sure you can trust them, unless they're from the organization you work with. And second, watch Apple for upcoming patches. So that's all this week. I hope it was entertaining and hopefully a learning experience. As always, there's just a ton of fascinating stories out there. For instance, this week the U.S. weather uh, system got hacked, which affected temporarily satellite data. Uh, the U.S. Postal Service got hacked. There's a mobile phone to own conference, and many, many mobile phones were taken over. So be sure to check out the reference section in the blog post associated with this video. I put a lot of extra interesting stories in that reference section. And you can, of course, find that at blog.watchguard.com. This is our newly redesigned site, WatchGuardSecurityCenter.com will now redirect to the new site, blog.watchguard.com. So be sure to update your, your bookmarks. On top of that, if you don't already subscribe to it, I recommend you subscribe to blog.watchguard.com to get the latest stories as soon as we post them. Finally, for daily up to the minute security news, follow me on Twitter, I'm at SecAdept, or you can follow WatchGuard at WatchGuardTech. Thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.